And welcome everyone to yet another Star Ladder iLeague Invitational game. I'm Reddit and today we have a special guest joining us. Halbert, how are you doing? I'm great, Reddit. Thanks for having me. What a game we have today. Complexity versus Evil Geniuses. Just the first one of the night as well, so I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, Evil Geniuses, of course, this is their second game. Uh, the first game they beat, if I'm not mistaken, Team Blue Pikachu. And Complexity taking out Leviathan. So both of these two teams progressing to the next stage. Uh, I think this is the semi-final of the, or the quarterfinal. Semi-final of the upper bracket or quarterfinal of the upper bracket. It's going to be quite interesting to actually see both of these two heading up against each other. But take us quickly through the band so far. With the Venomancer and Spirit Breaker banned out so far from Complexity. And Ancient Apparition and Lich banned out by Evil Geniuses. I don't think any real surprises there. Um, Batrider also being banned out now by EG. Actually watching some Batrider earlier today. It's still, you know, it's Batrider. It, it just won't ever go away, it seems. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, looking at the past couple of days, Venomance has been one of the, if not the first, or if, uh, you know, basically during the first phase, being banned out every single time. Um, the, I think there was one game where Venom wasn't banned out, and they might have actually lost the game yesterday. I can't actually remember. But Venom being a first phase banned material, the whole, well, you know, the whole tournament so far. Ancient Apparition, always first, first picked, first banned. Um, Lich also being up there. And Nature's Prophet actually going through this time. So I've seen a lot of times these Spirit Breakers sometimes being banned out, or the Nature's Prophet being banned out, then the Spirit Breaker being picked up. Is that because Nature's can actually, or not Nature's, Spirit Breaker can um, counter the Nature's Prophet, or is it just that global vision presence that both of those two heroes give? I think it's a bit of both, eh? I think Spirit Breaker is in a good place at the moment. It's very, very difficult to defend against the team. Very, very frustrating. You have to make sure that you have constant uh, warding vision up. But even then, we've seen teams that have become a little bit smarter about where they charge from and how they set up those gangs. So, certainly a hero that can cause a lot of damage to you. And of course, uh, I wouldn't say it's like the hardest counter to Nature's Profit, but it is a very strong one. And it's obviously, just in the sense, I can just track him down and, you know, he tries to split push and all of a sudden he's got a Spirit Breaker on his head. And it just gets harder as the game goes on, and especially with mobile heroes in the game with the likes of Io. It's just not really something that uh, I think either side really would be too keen to have up against the Nature's Profit. And of course, this time being picked up by Cole, they're going to be quite keen to get rid of this. Uh, hero that can cause such a lot of havoc for him. Um, but interesting to see the silence as well. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Silence of myself. I, I know it can certainly operate very, very well in the right circumstances. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how it works, how they action the actual Silence ulti here. Because I do think that's where you make or break a good Silence. And it seems really, really straightforward and simple. But sometimes a little bit of delay on the actual ultimate or just using it too early or too tricky happy can make such a big difference in a team fight. And especially with Io on the map, you know, you, you have to be very, very careful about when you're going to use ultimates and how you're going to respond yeah. to it. And although it might be nice to trigger off that Silence ulti when you have an Io jump in your head, you also don't want to use it and all of a sudden find that you've got nothing out of the deal and, you know, you have a hero that's not offering a huge much amount otherwise. Well, having a look at the rest of the bands, Complexity banning out two very push-oriented heroes with the Beastmaster as well as the little spider coming out there as well. That's quite an interesting band coming through. Um, Evil Genius taking out two initiators and counter initiators in the bat ride as well as the Earthshaker. You know, just trying to stop that instant jump with you know either one of those two heroes and the nature's prophet being on the side of complexity if you have any of those heroes nature's prophet will be split pushing will be able to tp in any time at any point on the map but evil genius have their own little global pocket strat or not pocket strat but their little global strat there with the io and lately i've been seeing io just being picked up you know not actually being comboed a lot with a lot of different heroes just being picked up just because he gives you that you know global presence he gives you that disengage very quickly if someone jumps on you even if your whole team is there i will will just tether you relocate just a little bit back and then you could just counter engage with your whole team that's of course if you're just a little bit out of position so i do like this coming up from evil genius and of course it is fear of busy captain um busy captaining up evil geniuses i mean yesterday i was like saying the whole time ppd my captain my, or like oh captain my captain but that's actually fear's role right now yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, obviously, Fear being a player that has, you know, he, he's won a TI. This is a player that has a huge amount of experience, perhaps more than almost anybody else that you can find on the international circuit at the moment. And it's it's something that I think is going to bring a huge amount of value to the side. But he does have big boots to fill. I mean, PPD, the villain glasses, as they say, is somebody who is 
obviously renowned for his captaining ability, somebody that has really made a huge difference in, for any team that he's he's come across. So, uh, Fear, probably the right man for the job. We'll see how that works out for him. And, uh, well, he, we do see a Sven in the game. Probably <laughs> interesting to see if we actually were to end up in that one. But also, we've seen some magical things from EG with a Sven in the past. So hopefully, we'll see something pretty magical tonight as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Complexity just decided to take out the Docs here. Here, just I mean, Docs here, Jakiro's fan, good combo coming through there, good front liner to actually help with this fan. But that's a hero that Complexity is actually lacking is that front liner. And EG, they literally see the same thing and they ban out the Brewmaster. I mean, Brewmaster can actually help with the push um, as soon as you hit that level 6 or whenever you actually skill up the ultimate. You can use it just to take down a tower. Plus, it has a disable with the boulder. Um, it has the little tornado that you can throw someone up. It has the debuff coming through there as well. So a good ban out there coming from EG because Brewmaster can actually tank a lot of damage and can be that frontliner for complexity. Actually, it's interesting though because Sven actually does fairly well against the likes of Brewmaster. Uh, the, the control is obviously a massive problem, but once you have that BKB up, uh, you you are a little bit vulnerable when you, when you use your primal split, just because you know if if you're up against a natural cleaver and you want to just jump onto a particular hero, if you get caught out by that Sven, you can easily initiate with the likes of the Blink Dagger, just cleave you out of the game very very quickly. So uh, it is a fairly decent banner all the same as you mentioned. I think they are missing something they can just get in the front lines and soak up some of this damage. And well, I mean Underlord's probably the right man for the job in that regard. Um, also, quite an interesting lineup here all of a sudden from Complexity because beforehand when you looked at Nature's Prophet, it kind of sat alone in this. I think this can apply some pressure to some side lanes, it can be a general nuisance around the map. But now with the Underlord as well, or as a friend of mine, Wilson, likes to say, the Uber Lord, uh, you do now have this ability to really get around the map very, very quickly. And that's going to be very, very interesting to see how they combine up against the IO because, well, IO can bring a friend, but Underlord brings the whole party with him. So it could be a pretty interesting matchup here, and I think we're going to see some very entertaining movements around the map. Um, good luck for the camera control friend because this game is going to be pretty crazy. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be one of those. I actually missed the first bud yesterday, so I literally face desk myself like 10 times oh, after oh. that coming through. But with an Underlord there, I actually like this because it gives them initiation as well, which is something that complexity is lacking. It gives them de-initiation or, you know, um, retreat, you know, some kind of retreat power. Mm. And the Underlord has that. He has his Atrophy Aura as well that can actually just tank up a lot um specifically up against a lot of the melee heroes the sven is there the phantom assassin being picked up now by eg as well so that's going to be arteezy running this phantom phantom assassin is this going to be an aggro try keep in mind we've been seeing quite a lot of aggro tries and dual off lanes coming through during this tournament yeah it would be interesting the io is not really the i mean i generally like to be Dueled up with something you get control Dual mid runes. with RTZ, um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that's the, pretty much what we should see here. Um, but, uh, you know, you always see surprising things in Dota. So let, let's see what these two sides have in store for us. I do think, though, that this game, once again, is going to be completely decided by who gets ahead of the other in the form of map control. Because both sides really function at their best when they have free reign of the map. When you can start locking in your opponents into the coordinates of the actual map and... and force them into zones where they're trying to like sneak in a little bit of farm and then all of a sudden you have a gang squad arriving on your head. So whoever gets hit in the early stages could really, really control the entire, the entire game from moment one. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see. I think that it is going to be a little bit uh, like harder on the likes of the eye to really con maintain that pressure as the game goes on. But I is one of those heroes that if you get off to a good start, if you get that early level six and you start really causing havoc for your opponent, it just it seems endless and never lets up. It's one of those nightmare heroes to play against when it's played well. And well, you know, you do have crit on it. So good luck finding a better eye player than him. Yep. I mean, one of those, you know, age-old, you know, questions is Sven versus Furion. Sven, of course, can clear out the treants quite fast but what is Sven's biggest weakness and that's being kited and if you're on there with a sprout even if it's just a single second where the Sven has to actually use a quelling blade to try and eat through the trees or whatever that second moves your entire team away from a Sven so it's in all honesty I think it's going to depend on who actually gets the jump first because if Sven gets his Echo Saber up as well as his Blink Dagger. But hold on, we are we going to see some kind of engagement here. EG do want to move in. They do want to play aggressive, planting a very deep ward down as well. And they just scout out a tree. Yeah, there you go. Everyone gets scouted out. And a little bit of body blocking coming through. Stun coming up, hitting up onto the Rubik right now. Rubik, however, does lift up the Sven. There's a huge engagement coming through. The first blood is going to go the way of the Sven. And unfortunately, Universe might actually follow up. 
this Underlord and all of a sudden the Firestorm just doing so much damage there. Yeah, I don't think they'll be too happy with that, sacrificing the offlaner for a support. Uh, additionally, I want to point out that there's also additional damage being dealt here as well. So Fear also sitting on only a half HP, that's going to hurt them a little bit as well. I, I just want to point out as well that that Rubik, although he died, he also got a Ravage. Z Freak managed to get the Telekinesis onto everyone. And EG obviously stacking up made his life very, very easy there. And in the end, they were punished for it quite heavily. Uh, I don't think that's the start they were looking for, but it was certainly an entertaining start. Let's have some more of that, please. Yeah, definitely. And. If this game is going to go the way of most of the games so far this tournament, it's going to be a very aggressive game, very in-your-face game. And having Universe here running a solo top up against the Nature's Prophet, he should do okay, especially once he gets level 3 up in uh, his heal, of course. He should be able to clear out those Treants. But I think it will be a pretty even game between those two. But middle lane, I mean, this is where the dual lanes is... This is where the action, in my opinion, is going to be because if, you know, Arteezy gets his level 3 up, gets a couple levels up in Stifling Dagger, he's just constantly going to be jumping on the Sniper and he's going to be healed up by crit. So this is going to be a very difficult early game for the Sniper. And as a Sniper, you want to have a good lead. I think one of the big things about Sniper as well is that you want to use a Shrapnel to dissuade engagement, but the problem is that you don't really have the ability up against something like a PA because of the amount of burst damage you can actually do, especially when she reaches that, that, that 6 and she can literally crit you out of the game. But it's not just him as well. Z Freak as well has to be very careful. And you see the damage come out very early on as well. I think that between the two of them mid lane, they're probably going to have the better of the time. Um, but for Sniper, it's really a case of finding as much farm as possible and getting himself into a position where you can punish uh, the, I wouldn't say lack of long range initiation since you do have crit on the IO, but at the same time, it's always very, very frustrating trying to go onto a sniper. And if he can get to a point where he does have the likes of a dragon on stuff and does have a little bit of mobility, he would be able to be quite a pest, as uh, we do see snipers often uh, manage to pull off. Yeah, well, not a lot of healing left here on the sniper. He's already used up his full salve, if I'm not mistaken. And having a look at the last hits and the deny so far, it's quite even 10 and 1 up against 9 and 2 between these two middle heroes. I do think, though, if we do see some kind of rotation from Fear on the Jakiro, as soon as he gets a level or two um, extra up, this middle lane is going to be where the next kill is going to be. Oh, by the way, I didn't miss first blood this time. Cap Excellent up. work. I mean, I think they made it easy for you, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to accept this. I'm happy with the start. It's been good so far. Let's hope that we miss no kills. Because, I, you know, that's like a challenge, right? If you manage to not miss kill up against an IO lineup, I'll be very pleased with your hits. Is that a challenge? What do I and get in return? A in the game and an <laughs> what do I get in return here? Okay, I'm awake now, guys. I'll give you a high five. Nah, not worth it. The stream will give you a high five. Okay, if the stream gives me a high five, of course. Let's the have a look though towards the bottom lane. There's actually a going. massive stack coming up here, and this is of course going to be farmed up by Moo. To be honest, I really like a core Underlord. I like what it can give with the Atrophy Aura. I like the tankiness it can provide, and I like. It literally being that unkillable, unstoppable force. It's also one of those heroes that can just like punish you, right? Because just like the eye, in the sense, you can get around the map very, very well. Um, sorry, mid lane crit. It's actually helping out at easy as they try to bring down them, but not quite enough damage to them. The shrapnels are going to come out. The support comes in from Chessie, and does he want a piece of this? They're actually holding back on this one. Wolf finally tossed one out onto Teezy, and that looks like it'll be the end of it, but Prophet already showing it. And looks like they're still keen on this one. Yep. EG, as always, you know, they just want to be in their face. But the thing is, after that initial burst, after that initial amount of damage, you can't really do anything. Crit's just going to heal up um, RTZ. He does have, of course, a bottle up as well. So it's all going to come down to the headshots versus the crits later on. Yeah, it, it's... It's going to be an interesting tussle. Once again, I think the biggest problem with Sniper is always going to be just trying to find a way on top of him. As soon as you get onto him, he's a particularly slow hero as well, so you can burst him down pretty easily. But it's just breaking that distance, finding a way in, that's going to be the big thing. And I think that's one of the things that Phantom Assassin does well in the early stages. But once team fights get a little bit messy, it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. Well, let's have a look once again onto the middle lane. Arteezy taking quite a bit of damage. They actually Do they have a high ground ward here? I think they just need to drop a high ground ward here for the Sniper so he can continue on just punishing Arteezy whenever the Wisp is not there. I'm also quite surprised because Wisp, Wisp has only gone for a single stack and as soon as you're level 3... Okay, but he's... Uh, hold on quickly, you might actually see an engagement here onto Limp right now. Limp might be in a lot of trouble, but nothing's gonna happen from that. I was just I about mean, to get hype and just about to get crazy and then... <laughs> it fell flat on my well, I fell yeah, flat on my what face. What we need with you though is one of those uh, earphone warnings. Um, stream, you have been warned. Or it's gonna get loud. But the thing is, I, I want to point out that these rotations, or rather, these attacks on the sniper in the mid lane aren't fruitless because they have forced two rotations ready. Obviously, one is just from Nature's Prophet who will keep you around quite happily. 
but it's time that he's not spinning in his own lane. And now, of course, when you have the silence as well, making his way through to the mid lane, you can see already how it's punished him. He's using up his uh, clarity already, trying to just get back into this. But the TP scroll usage and uh, the time not found his lane supporting whoever's in bot lane at the time obviously hurts them quite a bit. So. It's nice that the pressure is being placed on it, but it would be really good for EG if they could actually try to find a kill onto the sniper. Although he is actually suffering a little bit for levels. Um, the farm's not too bad at 23 for 7, but he is actually behind Ortizia at the moment. And once again, you know, it's this war of nutrition early on that's going to just dictate how this matchup's going to go in the next couple of minutes. And the, you don't want to be a sniper behind a Phantom Assassin in mid. The it's big really, thing, though, good. for me is the Phantom Assassin is closing it on level 5, and Sniper hasn't hit level 4 yet. That... That's basically the power that the Wisp is giving to here. And one thing that I wanted to bring up earlier is as soon as Wisp gets level 2 up in Spirit, you can technically stack the Ancients, this camp, and this camp all at the same time. If you hit this one at uh, 53, 54, and then your 55, your tenth or your Wisp must just hit the next um, camp. You can literally stack three camps at, at once. That would be great if you had a cleaver in your team. So with natural. Oh wait, they have that. So <laughs> yeah, we're pretty much perfect. It's, it's a great hero to support Sven as well. Uh, obviously, Sven is one of the traditional heroes that go very well with Io. Um, wonder why God strength and uh, generally a, a lot of farm early on does mean he's going to be pretty difficult to deal with. So in the bottom lane, we do have a little bit of a tussle going on onto said uh, Sven as he is going to get sprouted up. Enjoy that. Gets the treants as well. Going to toss out the stormbolt as he actually wants to turn things around on his chest. Can he finish the job? Doubt it. Yep. He doesn't have his level 6 up yet. He did have Warcry, which he actually popped before that. So it's actually quite interesting that Moo's gone back up to the top lane and they've thrown the Nature's Prophet bottom with a little bit of support coming to you on Kao on the Silencer. So did they do that because Moo was actually doing very well in his lane or did they do that just because it's very difficult for the Nature's Prophet and the Nature's Prophet is just going to be feeding up against the Necro the whole time, especially as soon as uh, the Death Ball starts getting skilled up. I mean, I, I don't really think the Nature's Prophet's the kind of hero that should just get stomped by a Necrophos. Um, I, I get the feeling this is more about preference on where, where they want to find their farm priority on the map and where they think they're going to get it most easily. But it is interesting to see that these, this team has made so many rotations so early on, and it does hurt. I mean, if, if you look at the last hits, it's sure that at the moment you do have an advantage going to EG with both the Phantom Assassin and the Sven, the highest on Phantom the list Assassin right now. Phantom Assassin sitting on 41 and 14. Versus 26 yeah. and... Uh, sorry, I just had to point that out. Versus 26 and 8 on the sniper. Yeah, it, it, it's it's starting to really mount up. But you also have to take into account just the rotations that, that these players are making. Because not only, of course, is it the actual money that you're spending on those TP scrolls, but additionally, it's just the time, once more, that you're not spending in lane and not getting those last hits. So, EGI winning the, the, the little oh, battle... Oh, an engagement here onto the top lane. Chasey actually gets stunned up here by this fan. Another one to go on. Unfortunately, Universe does not have his ulti to follow up he was very close but no kill no reward going the way of eg there yeah so once again eg small victory don't, don't quite get the kill but let's send nature's profit packing again and jesse actually he, he's had a fairly decent time of it in the sense that you know the lanes are under pressure at the moment and he's sitting at 32 for 15 which is second only to the underworld on his side so it, it's nice just to make those conversations and, and you know just just slow him down a little bit. I, I remember this. I can't remember who said it, but it was just a comment made about you know how to deal with an anti mage. You know if you slow down a battle fury by one minute, it's still one minute less that you have to worry about him for. So it, it's it's a similar purpose for the hero like Nature's Prophet, where once he gets a couple of items up, you can become a, a real nuisance to your, uh, your your side. So just nice work there by by sending him packing, but th they really do have to get some of these into actual kills because it's all great and well that you're winning these small battles, which Dota is certainly made of, but at the same time, you need to be winning these battles and getting a little bit more out of the deal for yourself because you are, of course, expending mana and your own resources and, hey, your own time spending just farming up. So hopefully some of these kills will turn into, uh, or are these attempted to turn into kills, and we have something for it to shout about, which we will all love. Hey, don't worry, that will come. I mean... The early in the mid game, or well, the early in the early mid game phase, that's where you shine. That's where you can talk. As soon as late mid, or like the late game comes, or late mid game comes, I'm going to be shining so much, especially with the lineups that both of these two teams have, because they want to be moving around the map the whole time, going for quick kill kills, going for quick ganks, and Crit might actually be in a bit of trouble right now. Is he going to be scouted out? There you go. He just gets blown up. Z Freak actually getting that kill. They do manage to get a counter kill up onto the sniper. So once again, it's a 1 for 1 trade off. But no, Chasey comes in. He wants to turn around, go onto Artesia. Artesia's in a lot of trouble. That's a massive kill coming up here for Complexity. Z Free getting a double. 
That is in fact a 3 for 1 trade off. Yeah, I also want to point out as well that that's better than it looks because the silencer who died right at the beginning of that fight, he, he was technically gang uh, tanking the gang because he actually was going out to put up a ward and his smoke was in fact used by EG as well. So they were looking for something a lot heftier than the silencer. They managed to get him, sure, but they, they lost their phantom assassin. They lost a lot. So it, it actually hurt all the good work they've done so far in this matchup. And we're talking about kills being important and actually making something of it. You know, this is one of those opportunities where Cole did a really good job of making something of their opportunity and doing very well in the end. Yeah, 42 is the kill score currently. However, EG still hold on to a narrow uh, lead in regards with net worth. But looking at the top two, it is the Sven and the Phantom Assassin leading by 4,100, 3,500. The big one here is though Moo playing on this Underlord. He's just tanking it up and he'll probably have his pipe up pretty soon if that's what he actually wants to go he'll he'll probably just pick up his hood of defiance to start off with and there's the first kill that i actually missed this game it was a quick jump onto poor little chessy we'll forgive you for this one but only this one i but caught it like a second too late but i caught it <laughs> it's all right um but yeah important kill to get there it's going to take a little bit of harassment here potentially going to toss out the assassinate doesn't fat toss it on the end that, that really hurts man assassinate's not a nice kill for uh, for early on, but uh, do you hear Sven getting angry? He's getting angry, of course, after this big stack of Ancients, and they're going to get a lot of experience as well onto the IO as well as Ortiz, and that is, in fact, the 6 up on the IO as well, so I think this is the time where you'd expect to see crit. Yeah, uh, there you go, here's a TP exactly. relocate coming in right now, they want to go in onto Moo, Moo, unfortunately, he's not going to make it, and it's the Reaper side that actually finally gets the kill, however, crit does pop in the back line, there's a quick TP in coming from the Sniper, getting that counter kill, it's a Moo for a crit, I'll take that trade off any day of the week. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll be pretty happy with that. Good good day at the office. Um, the, the only real downside of it all was that there was a nice work done by Cole in the top lane where they actually went and f finished off that tier 1 tower. So they got a little bit of money in the, the coffers of their teammates as well. Um, but obviously losing the Underlord is probably the big ticket. But one thing to bear in mind is that Profit is one of those here as well that he'll become more and more valuable as the game becomes more opened up. So when you start taking out these out of towers, Profit obviously has a lot more room to operate and get a little bit more adventurous where he wants to be, where they want to ward. And uh, this is a very nice objective for them. So although Cole might be down in net worth, they're certainly not down in this game. Now, well, this fan is busy farming up a storm here, getting another triple, I think that was a triple or quadruple ancient stack. But let's have a look here towards the top lane. There's ATP coming in here from the Necro. They want to go in onto Chessy right now. There's a global silence, so they actually can't engage there at all. However, this does put global silence on cooldown for two minutes. So we might actually see the side of EG decide to play aggressively with the Wisp relocate. It's up in 20 seconds. They know there will be no global silence up there. The big thing is they actually made a huge amount of that. I didn't expect them to pick up the tier 2 tower as well. But just really good pressure being placed by Cole onto that, to those structures. And although it was denied, once again, we, it, this is a game about map superiority. And right now, I think oh, Cole... Oh, Kyle is in a lot of trouble. And here he gets stunned up. However, Moo comes in to try and actually help them out. He just gets blown up. Silence is extremely weak currently. And Moo gets... Slow it up a little bit. He's trying to use his ulti to actually escape. Oh. And no, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. Oh, oh he dies. Me? What? That was... How? Well, like, it would just look so good. And the crit comes out. And you're just like, you know, the numbers are there, right? Arteezy had a couple of hits on him. You had to expect one of them were eventually going to be a crit. But it, it just felt so... You had to feel sorry for the man. He was literally home and safe. I was so counting it and I counted away. seven seconds and it's only supposed to be a six second dark <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let Icefrog know that there's a mistake here. Yeah, I think I think that uh, Cole would agree with you. They certainly want to, but they are going to re-engage. Oh, there's a Firestorm so coming so down. However, they want to go onto Sven. Sven is tanky, especially with a crit there. But can they can they do it? Damage to actually kill him. Carl's coming in. And there's the Assassinate. It does not kill Arteezy. However, the Wisp is down. Now it's going to be followed up by the Sven. Unfortunately, they can't really do enough. Kyle getting the double kill there on the Silencer. And that will actually give him a significant amount of gold, so he can actually start finishing up his boots and just tank it up a little bit. Are they going to turn around and go in further? Universe does have his Reaper Scythe if he needs it, but Rubik, no, he just picks up the Death Pulse, so he'll be able to heal himself and kill everyone else around. But here comes Fear. He does not have his level. Well, he does have his level 6 up right now. If he wants to drop down his Macro Pyre, waiting for the perfect opportunity. Moo might be in quite a bit of trouble right now. He was standing in the Macro Pyre for a long time. Arteezy decides to back out, and he just runs away. 
So I don't know if you caught that, but Universe got a little bit of a taste of his own Nature's Prophet medicine there. He actually got uh, completely caught out on the back lines there by Chess. He got a perfect sprout off onto the uh, perfect treant block as well. So he was literally just standing there wasting his time as the fight went on. And beautiful play there. And this is a very, very decent looking uh, attempt at this match so far from Complexity. I mean, we... They got the they got the map control. They now have a little bit of a lead here. They're starting to build up some items that are going to get them through this mid stage of the game. It's looking good, man. If you're if you're a cool fan, you can have your tail up right about now. That, looking at the sniper slowly but surely working his way up towards that maelstrom. Um, I do like this, especially the amount of magical damage that you can do up against the PA. You know, we saw that early on. That's why he leveled up his shrapnel as well. The shrapnel also doing quite a bit of damage up against his fan because it doesn't matter how much armor you have, that shrapnel is still going to be doing a lot of damage. With that Maelstrom, the extra procs that it's going to be giving you, that's sort of their way to try and deal with the early game, especially when there's four level, you know, three levels up in blur on the Phantom Assassin. Oh, sorry, bot lane. They're going to go in and remove the Unlord here, but he does actually preemptively cast his ultimate so he's out of harm's way and it also mean that the relocate came in from crit and sumail so they're gonna have to back off for now but uh, and pretty crit much uh, it's the s right oh. well <laughs> yeah well let's have a look here sorry we're just busy quickly looking at the s coming through there they do manage to get the kill here onto kyle however crit is in quite a bit of well quite low hp he's just gonna tether himself away so it's just a quick single kill in and out and that's it. Yeah, it's just a pretty simple pickup on the silence and nothing, nothing to write home about, but they all matter in the end. Limp's nice just busy farming the bot lane as well, by the way. He's putting quite a bit of pressure into this bot lane and we'll get a little bit of chip damage off into this tier too. The problem with that is you're pushing it out and that that also means that you can you know, that you're basically giving a lot of open space for the sniper, because every time that you push onto a tier 2 tower, sniper knows he can actually go into lane and he can farm up there, um, and it should be pretty safe. Every time that the creep waves are roughly around this area over here, they know they can't go in because of the relocate gank, just like what's happening right now. They're going in onto the Underlord, the Global Silence is there. Pit of Malice actually catching up onto two heroes. Crit has to be careful, he is on very low HP. They want to go in for more, and everyone just decides to back off. Mu, however, he wants he wants more. He's extremely tanky. He does have that full hood of defiance up, working up towards that pipe or that um, mech next. They do manage to pick off the Rubik there, and also oh, very low. crit. No, yeah. But that's the thing. Every time that you get crit low, that just means he gets to heal up someone in his team, basically back to full. I gotta say as well, by the way, the the sniper he had already a torrid time in lane. Oh well, you know, Comte is cursed. We engaged in here. He does get the relocate gang as well, and this should be the end of him. Then brought down. Easy pick up a very important scalp. Yep, they're probably gonna just try and transition this into a tier one tower middle. However, the tower still has more than half HP, so I don't think they'll be able to get this before sniper actually returns. And looking at the start, I mean, it's just got in. F it's a little bit in favor of complexity. But only by like a couple hundred. Yeah, th this is small numbers, right? I think the biggest thing is once again is, is the map advantage. You have more towers up in your team right now, and two strategies that are both based around getting around the map quickly. Obviously, you have that advantage. I think the one thing is that EG also have a little bit of extra money on the, on the deck that one has to consider. They, once they do claim these towers, they'll have a little bit of a, an additional boost, and we would assume that. Both these two uh, tier one tiles will go down before any more tier twos fall, so, unless there's a big team fight, of course. But yeah, so that's roughly around two thousand gold consider. just between those two towers. Um, well, actually, it's a little bit more because you know complexity does have the top tier two tower taken as well. Hmm. But EG does have a lot of money on the deck, as you stated. However, there's three of them here: Z Free, Carl, as well as Mu. They want to move in. They they're looking for someone to actually go on, and RTZ might be the target, or is it going to be Kyle? No, oh, RTZ looks at Kyle. He looks at him funny. And uh, no crit it's coming through there. <laughs> it takes a dagger for his efforts. But I think that's probably going to be the end of that. And Roshan also under fire here at the moment. As Cole look to pick up a pretty big objective as well. Giving them a lot more um, ability to play aggressively should they pick it up. And does it look like EG are too keen to contest? RTS is, well, RTZ is pretty close nearby. Um, but... We'll, we'll see. We'll see how there is. It looks, it looks like this is over. Like this is a free rush on, and that's a pretty interesting state of affairs. And it's, it's a very slow rush as well. 
Yeah, I mean, this took a while, and, and you have to expect that EG knew exactly what was going on. And Smoke Gang has come out now from them. Maybe that's the play they're looking for. So the surprise, hey, let you take Roshan, here's a team fight. Uh, I don't know if that has a statistically good outcome, but they're interested well, in it. They're busy scanning right now. Are they actually going to decide to jump here onto Moo? Moo and the rest of the side of Complexity, they've smoked up as well, and all of a sudden, Crit, he pops his, his own smoke as well as Moo's smoke. They do manage to actually get back, but the counter in the share is going to come through. There's the Blink Dagger in from the Sven as well, He's going straight in onto Limp. Limp might be in a lot of trouble. The Global Silence is there. Limp is still alive. Unfortunately, he drops down. That is going to be the Aegis. However, Crit as well as Arteezy, they're extremely low HP. Fear, he drops down his ultimate. It should help out just a little bit. They do not manage to kill Limp. A second time yet, Sven, he's still going for it, manages to get the kill, but unfortunately, it's a three, it's a four for one trade-off. Yeah, so, EG, they might end up losing a little bit more here as Universe gets a couple of right clicks. They're going to try to get those treants around him, try to block off his path, and they're doing a fairly good job of it for the time being, making him go towards the left of the tower here. Tries to back off, gets followed in by Z-Freak. He doesn't actually have mana, so more of just a bit of a nuisance than anything else. And looks like Chessy wants out, so he's going to back off this one. Necro, obviously, a pretty challenging target to bring down. Don't have the mana for it, don't have the damage for it. Let's leave this one. We'll take our four and be happy with it. But Cole, that's a very important fight for them. And they did lose the Aegis for it. But, well, you, you'd probably be happy to accept that loss for an exchange yeah. of four heroes. Bringing the gold lead back in their favor. Universe not dying there, though, is quite a big problem. The big thing is there's a lot of sustain on the side of EG. However... Complexity has so much burst, initial burst, that even with the heal on the Necrophos, it only does so much, um, you know, healing. Even when the Necro healed the Wisp, while the Wisp was tethered, that basically saved three heroes' lives, just because of that. But the problem is you still have the Sniper, you, or, you know, when the Sniper came back with um, his Shrapnel, you still have the Nature's Prophet doing a lot of damage, and the big one here is the Underlord. The Underlord is just standing in front. He's just doing as much damage as possible. Look at his Atrophy Aura getting just extra bonus damage the whole time. And sure, you don't normally think of Underlord dealing a lot of damage, but the longer he survives, the more damage he does in regards to the right clicks. And his Firestorm only has a 12 second cooldown. I think he cast that like three times during that fight. Yeah, um, one of the things as well is that they played around the Shrapnel very well. Um, when Mu was casting his ultimate, they did in fact stay pretty much in the Shrapnel the entire time, just reducing the amount of damage the two melee cores could actually put out on them. But well, he is being hunted here. Yeah. They're hunting so Mu, they, they can't is. find him though. One with the jungle. I'll have no part of this, but don't get too cocky now, because you're still absolutely vice script by the EG players at the moment. Well, they will scout him out right now, and this is just going to be a standard TP. Is Fear actually going to cast his Ice Path? Unfortunately, it's not going to trap Moo. Moo TP's back middle. A lot of action has actually happened here, but, you know, no... There's been one massive team fight where, like, everyone's died so far. But a lot of poking and prodding coming through here from both teams. The problem, though, looking towards the late game stage, EG, in my opinion, do have this. And Complexity know it. They want to put as much aggression or as much economical damage onto the side of EG as quickly as possible. They want to try to take a couple more towers, get another kill or two, and then start going in for high ground. Because if you're going to give a Sven as well as a Phantom Assassin more space to farm, it's going to be very problematic for you in the long run. Yeah, I think even with the snipe, you don't want to go into the, up against that late game if you can avoid it. And they do have this great advantage. And once again, just taking some more real estate for their, their own bring down bring down this tier 2 tower as well just opens up the map so nice for them and if you just look at the map and you can see how much space you really have to operate if you're EG at the moment you pretty much have your side of the river and the, the bottom jungle that you can really get aggressive in but for Cole it's it's everywhere at this point this bottom tier 2 on, on die is not going to give them a huge amount of uh, good service uh, it's, it's probably less important than oh it is certainly less important than shrine in every conceivable way at this point yeah. so I think at this point, if you're a Cole fan, you're looking in a very, very good position. EG, e well, if you like EG, if you want to bleed blue, right now is probably the time to show your sport. Oh, Silencer jumping here onto the Phantom Assassin as well as a blink in from Z Freak. He does, of course, manage to uh, do quite a bit of damage there with the Death Pulse, but it's not going to be enough. The Wisp tethering out Phantom Assassin, and they should actually be able to... Wait, was that a relocate? Yeah, there it is, the portal coming through. Quite surprised, yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, quite surprised Arteezy didn't come close enough for that uh, tether out. But with that, of course, that means Underlord used his ultimate as well. There was no global silence to actually try and stop that disengage coming through. But the problem Complexity has is BKB's 
uh, or a BKB is up right now on this fan. That's a 10 second BKB. And if I was EG, I'd look to fight now, even though they're still building up a BKB onto the Phantom Assassin. And you know, we've been saying this from the beginning, the amount of magical damage and burst that the side of complexity can actually put out onto EG early on is significant. That's why as soon as the fight starts, within the first second and a half, half of EG is sitting on less than a quarter HP. The problem is when, when those BKBs are up on the Sven as well as on the Phantom Assassin, you're not going to be able to burst them anymore. Why do you do that? I think one of the big things as well is that it would be a really good time for the strike because one of the things that uh, Complexity don't have at the moment is something like a four staff where they can get a allied unit out of, out of harm's way. We do have the the Dragon Lance up on the, the Sniper, but we don't know if he's, in fact he is in fact, can take a look, he is in fact going to go for that Hurricane fight next. So you have some mobility then, but if you can pick a fight now, it would actually be pretty nice in that regard. You just try to abuse that BKB, find that initiation onto these cores, bring them down before they can really get the items up that'll help them kite through your Sven. And it's got to be said as well that uh, it's kind of an interesting interaction that, that Phantom Assassin and Sven have, because Phantom Assassin is a Technically, a hero you'd like to kite, right? But the fact that he is that she has the ability just to keep you slowed is so consistently and has the mobility from a blink means that she actually works quite nice with the Sven because she lends that that first ability that's slow to the Sven as well, helping him keep up with those targets. So often they'll be going off the same one as well, just trying to delete it from the game. But oh. uh, tier two does drop down for EG, they're going to pick up one here thanks and to there's a smoke wrapper on coming oh. in, however, from the side of complexity. Who are they going to jump on? Unfortunately, they haven't managed to find anyone at this point. There it is, straight onto the Sven, but the Sven actually blinks in forward. They cancel, Moo cancels out his Firestorm as well as the Pit of the Malice. And this is going to be Sumel. They want to jump onto him. This is going to be his first 10 second BKB. Global Silence coming up as well. They want to go in onto the Phantom Assassin. I'm busy zooming out because there's a lot of fights happening all at once. And unfortunately, Necrophos is not going to die just yet. He's actually still alive. I do not know how they managed to survive this with so much coming down. The big thing here. Oh, Z Freak. Yeah, he's going to be the only one, well, you know, two heroes to die. Z Freak as well as the Silencer. I have to say, EG were actually very split up during that fight, and I think that saved them. Purely because the side of complexity did not know who they wanted to go on. They wasted a 10 second BKB on the Sven because he was perfectly blocked up by all the treants. He couldn't get anywhere. There was a secondary fight over here, and then there was a third fight over here. And if complexity is not blowing everything together, going in for a combo, they don't have enough damage to actually kill anyone on the side of EG. I think as well, it was really clumsy, that entire fight. I mean, the Sprout was missed on the Sven. Obviously, during his BKB form, it's a, it's a significantly different, different spell to try and get off into him. But you just expect the players of this party would be able to do so. So once they missed that, it did just mean the slow but inevitable death of their Silencer. Because, well, although the Sven didn't have mana to really do much, he didn't toss out a Storm Bolt or anything, he was able to just walk after the Silencer. And, and when you have that kind of play going on, it's, it's not the team fight that you envision. No one ever says, hey guys, Let's mess up on the Sprout and then watch the Sven slowly kill our Silence in the back lines whilst we pick a fight elsewhere. So, a little bit of miscommunication from both sides, I feel, in that last team fight. Obviously, working out a little bit better for EG, but it might just give them all a little bit of a scare and I might uh, convince them to be a little bit more, uh, just reform, settle down a bit and get the type of fight that they're really looking for. Yep. Once again, having a look at the gold graph, it's been, it started off in favor of EG with around 1,000, moving up 2,000 in favor of complexity. All the way back down to a thousand in favor of EG, up to three thousand in favor of Complexity. It seems like it's jumping up in like one thousand increments, and now it's gone all the way back down to zero. So this game is completely wide open. Ah, uh, the they all want the the the, the 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 rubber band mechanic to kick in. They're all trying to get behind. So whenever they get ahead, they just lose it. But I think more importantly, the uh, XP at the moment is really in favor of EG at six thousand. That's probably the big one. And the big problem for me is if you're a Complexity, you want to be ahead. You want to be ahead, you don't want to be behind up against a Sven as well as a Phantom Assassin. Phantom Assassin will have her BKB up probably within the next minute, depending on if she wants to save for buyback or not. But there is an engagement coming through here. They do actually jump onto the one and only Sven here, Sumail, dropping very quickly. And as you just saw there, they can put out a lot of damage if they all throw everything at once. Yeah, it's actually... Really? Oh, well, they're gonna get a little bit more from this wall. We're gonna pick up crit. So that's, I think, it's quite a nice sign for them because the, the, a lot of it the, was done via magical damage as well. So just saying, the Sven isn't really at the point yet where he can just somewhat shake it off and just ignore it for the most part. Uh, so 
it was just good at the speed that we were able to bring down and absolutely no response from EG they, they did in fact do a lot of damage or a fair amount of damage this time but it is still just a tier one so you expect it you expect to want a lot more from that kind of exchange um, but once again this this tier one and the, the middle one in particular are really causing a lot of trouble for EG and the fact that they just can't play the game around the map like they would want to and we are talking about nearly 30 minutes into this game and Complexity have done just a fantastic job of just keeping these towers up and keeping that pressure on the other side of the map because once again, if you even if you're losing team fights on the opponent's side of the map, it's incredibly hard to make any real big play off of it. Maybe you pick up a tower, maybe you pick up two, that'd be great. But, you know, it's not the same as if they pick up a team fight here, they can start threatening the tier threes and potentially even Arax if you get caught with that buybacks or, you know, manage to pick up that, that uh, dieback holy grail. Bottom tier 2 tower though, nearly dropping there, unfortunately, uh, or you know, fortunately, Sumail coming in there to actually defend it, and Mu up here on the middle lane, he actually has to be careful because he can be jumped, he is not as invulnerable as he might feel, he does not have a Shiva's guard up just yet. My big thing here though is the sniper, if the sniper starts getting farm, he can actually win this game for his team, but he needs a Manta up, he needs a full MKB up, and you know, that's still going to take a while, and by that time, it might just be too late because he's the only right click hero well actually no i'm completely wrong there is a nature's prophet that's been going into minus armor board he does have a silver's edge um he can split push i still feel though that eg do have the better late game here yeah i, I never want to counter a sniper right it's just because it's such frustrating hero to deal with but I tend to agree with you, if you were just to have a straight up man fight, I think you would want to favor the likes of EG. Also, don't underestimate the... Oh, oh, well, oh, there's oh. the jump in coming in right onto the Sven. However, the Sven does get controlled up a little bit. The Reaper side onto the silence, it does not do anything. There's the BKB and it is going to be Kyle getting hammered down, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. The Sven has to turn around and he has to try and do something else. And here comes Fear, he does get a good ice path off just to try and block them up. Z-Freak might be in a bit of trouble. No one has fallen just yet. And no, the first person that is going to die here, it is going to be Sumail, maybe. No, it is going to be Crit, and then it's going to be Sumail followed up there. Once again, the fight being split up very, very much. They did not have the initial damage to actually do anything. The problem is, EG just scattered, and they went out, and then they tried to go back in, but half their, you know, half their team didn't re-engage. So do you all re-engage or do you all get back? I think that call had to have been made. Um, from Fear side here on the Jakiro, he did of course drop a good ice path. He did manage to actually get everyone split up a little bit, but they just should have backed off or fought right on top of the, the you know, top shrine. The initial fight broke out right here. I'm not quite sure why everyone was busy running bottom. When you try and draw them up towards the high ground, you fight in, underneath your shrine and no one died from that initial burst, so if you can get your shrine, if you can actually get uh, a little bit of healing back up, you can counter engage. I mean, look, to be perfectly fair, that, that fight was a thousand percent over the moment they failed to engage on the silence and bring him down. During the drafting phase, we mentioned that a silence's ultimate is pretty much the biggest part of that hero. Just getting off the timely silence can make or break a team fight. And you saw after he actually was engaged, when he even delayed his silence because he knew that he wasn't going to die, he had an opportunity to almost bait a couple of the EG players into that fight and then drop the silence. And it was an absolutely massive misplay from EG not to be able to finish that that kill. They needed to make sure it was done or not go for it because if you're going to invest onto killing a hero and don't, especially when you commit the likes of your Reaper Scythe to it, <laughs> your fight's over and your team fight's lost and of course complexity they punished them for it they picked up the roshan as well so in a very good position of course it also improved their, their position as far as net worth goes it was pretty much a very even game now we're sitting at about 5k in favor of complexity and i think more importantly as well is that if you take a look at the experience it was the one shining hope i think for eg at that point they were always ahead in that experience yeah. and now we're sitting in a situation where complexity is now about 2000 ahead so I... that was pretty much the fight for me that I think it should Complexity go on to win this. It was that fight that won in the team fight, or that this entire match. Yeah. And in my honest opinion, the first 20 minutes of a game goes more Going about... Oh, Fierce well, in trouble. Yeah, poor little fear. He just gets blown up here by Limp. But the first 15 minutes of the game, it goes mostly around experience. If, you, if you're behind in gold, but you're ahead in experience, you do have that extra talent on a couple of heroes. And you know, you can bring it back quite easily. The problem is, as soon as you're hitting this 30 minute mark, and in my honest opinion, Mu is just playing out of his mind here. You know, we mentioned that whole engagement onto the sniper, but that was also Mu just dropping his pit of malice right onto the sniper before the Sven could BKB or do anything, and that just stopped everyone in their tracks. Yeah, I mean, I think I think EG up against it at this point. They're 
the also have to just be, oh, we'll hold the focus and almost certainly you can have the fight. I think you're gonna have to take the reins for it. Well, they're. I don't know if they actually want to take this fight. Fear is not there just yet. Moo's just busy doing as much damage as possible. The problem is, universes and well, everyone from EG, if they start getting too close, they're just gonna get whittled away here from Limp. Limp, of course, does have a full hurricane pike up, and he's just eating away at the tower. EG can't really do anything, and there you go. Now they actually want to jump in onto the Necro. Necro might be in quite a bit of trouble right now, but the counter engage is here from Mr. S coming through. He does use his BKB, but unfortunately, look at the amount of HP that Moose still has, and the Sven is just turning on him and trying to focus him the whole time, but he can't actually do anything. Now they want to turn around. They want to go in onto Limp. The BKB is up on there for Arteezy, and he's still busy chasing. He can't do anything, and there's going to be the first kill. Of course, that is only the Aegis. Now... It is going to be Sumail. He still wants to go in for more. He's actually busy teeping out. Is he going to be trapped up? Is he going to be killed? He manages to get all the way out of that. And that's going to be a Reaper side kill onto the Sniper. No, Sniper is still alive. Barely. And it is going to be the Phantom Assassin that comes in being healed up right now. They want to get a kill onto Chessy. Chessy actually gets frozen up right now. Underlord, do they manage to get the kill off? Underlord manages to get away there. And how did this fight go in favor of EG? Well... Right, so we have to go back in time for a little bit here, because the first thing I want to point out to you is that this is actually a bigger win than anybody who was just following the camera we've seen, because... Uh, the uh, camera round wasn't catching a lot, because it was just <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, we want to get a pretty crazy fight, but the one thing I want to point out as well is that uh, RTS was, RTS was on the top lane, and he actually took a tier one, that tier 1 tower down as well, so although, you know, whoop de doo tier 1 tower, 34 minutes, no big deal, but... Uh, the big thing is that, you know, t taking that down has opened up a little bit more space for them on the map, but... so. That happens, right? And then you have your actual team fight play out. But one of the big things that went wrong in that team fight was that there was actually a um, a sprout was not tossed onto the Sven, but actually onto the PA, right? Yeah. Now, PA right here, care. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, PA doesn't care, right? He's just literally going to throw it, right? Well, so you had a Sven who was enraged, just chomping down on the HP of your, of your teammates. So basically what happens is that you get the sprout off and but then there's actually a delayed silence so uh, the pa is actually let free he doesn't care at that point he's got off all, he's got off the, the blink he's got that increased attack speed he's able to just connect with the target now though there was some nice clever four stops like i want to point a little bit of um, that to the very first four stop in the fight where the engagement was actually on to move and he was four stopped away from the Sven early on and although he wasn't really facing the direction you'd want him to be it reduced a lot of the damage but beyond that point Complexity just did not control the fight, and EG were the ones in that side that just kept their their, their play together. They were the side that was just okay. We're just going to commit to certain uh, pickles, and and once they they had uh, call on the back foot, it was pretty much all she wrote. So a really nice and important team fight for them. But one last point I want to make out is look at the damage onto that tier three. This is one of the massive problems game, playing against the likes of the sniper is that even when you lose those team fights, you're losing a lot of structural integrity. And right now uh, they've got to be a little bit concerned about the state of that tier three because when once you open up those racks up against the likes of the nature prophet, you always feel like you're playing uphill. Yeah, well, and also during that fight, the Sven used his entire BKB duration, you know, chasing Moo because he couldn't get close to anyone else. But let's have a look. We might see an engagement coming through here. Once again, onto Moo. Moo gets chomped down. There's, of course, an ultimate coming through from the Sven. There is a BKB used, and this is exactly what he needed. One more hit needed onto Moo. Moo just gets chomped down. They want to turn around. Going on in onto an easy kill. Z Freak. Oh, they don't have any vision. No, they nice had play. no vision. Just, just get out the most casual way. I, I thought we were going to have a little bit of a chase, you know, with Blink Taggers this is being used, but in the end, just uh, keeping us cool and uh, able, able to get is out of way. But yeah, looks like this tier one finally goes down at 36 minutes, 37 minutes, call it. I, I, I say this, but you know, knowing my luck, it's not going to happen. Yep. It's, yep. <laughs> it's not, yeah. Cost this curse. So, sorry about that. Just ignore everything that happened. They were just going to pretend that I, I that I was going to say they're probably not going to get this tier one tower because reasons. And well, there's a relocated IO coming back in, bringing them back in mid. Are we going to see a huge fight coming through right now? They might just think it's only going to be a wisp, but no, it's going to be Rubik getting an ice pot down. Another one to turn around. It is going to be onto crit, and unfortunately, he just gets popped and blown the hell up. Yeah, that probably not the relocate he wants to be Oh, RTZ um, might be in a bit of trouble himself. He gets ice pot up, but... Hey, free blink out to your teammate, Universe. Universe is also there with a little death pulse to heal him up if need be. They do decide to back off. Look at the net worth again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, man, no one wants to be ahead. That, that's the game plan. Get behind, get, get the rubber band mechanic to kick in, and win the game with that. I do like this, though. I mean, it is a... <sighs> 
it's a much closer game than I would have thought when this started off, you know, looking at the draft, I thought when, you know, Complexity started getting the lead, I would have thought they would have won. Then, to be honest, around the 19 minute mark, as soon as EG got the lead themselves, if you have the lead and you have a PA as well as a Sven, you normally just start snowballing. But Complexity just did extremely well. And in my honest opinion, this comes from Underlord. Mu has been playing out of his mind currently. And he's also soaked up a huge amount of damage. I want to point that he's, he's just sitting in the front of the lines. Oh, Zeefreak actually standing up there. He was smoked up or no, he was invised up. He did manage to pop up the smoke that was here from EG. EG, they're busy chasing. They want to go in onto Limp. They can't actually catch anyone. Is Sumel going to just die for this? In typical Sumel fashion, he goes in. He blinks it forward. But unfortunately, he's completely out of position right now. Can they actually catch him? Can they do anything about this? Sumel, he's still busy charging it. He really wants this kill. He starts teeping. And then he cancels it. Sumel, what are you doing? Getting caught out. Getting caught with your pants down. Completely. And this might actually just push his entire team out of position as well. There's double damage up here on the Phantom Assassin. And oh, it's just going to be a BKB TP out. Um, um, yes. And then that happened. I, th I think, I think Crit was coming to try and save, or, I, or something, and died. Or but something. That was probably one of the curious things I've ever seen, actually. The thing um, is, I've played with a lot of Sven's, and as soon as a Sven just starts running in, that's just, you know, every time that I play with a Sven and he does that, I just want to start shaking my head because I know he's going to dive. I mean, and that's exactly what happened. On this as well. Well, looking at that, Networth has jumped once again in favor of Complexity and it's just going to be more tier 3 chip damage. That's the power that the Sniper has. Well, Sniper as well as an HS Prophet, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just gonna start, I mean, the, the damage is done. May maybe they can save the buyback, but... Oh, they actually want to jump here onto the Necro. Necro might be in a lot of trouble. He gets ulted up here from the Sniper. Will it actually pop him? It does. Limp getting the kill here onto Universe, and this will be a tier 3 tower dropping. Is there a buyback? There is one on Universe if he actually wants to use it. The glyphs being used, and they're busy fighting through backdoor protection. Is this I, worth the buyback? I honestly think you just drop this Rax. Say again? But yeah, I was gonna say, he has to buy back or they just lose Rax, but yeah. they're gonna, gonna accept that, and I don't think they get much out of this trade. That, well, there's the buyback, so now they actually have to try and fight this. There you go, Universe is coming in right now. He does have a Reaper Scythe if they actually want to use it, but RTZ just gets brought out. If they can't get anything from this, this buyback might just have been wasted because, keep in mind, the side of complexity, they were already backing. Yeah, it, it's really curious. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Universe possibly could have just bought back and kept Rax alive, but maybe you're hoping that they would get something greater off it, like a win a team fight. Obviously, I think at the stage of the game, you can sacrifice the racks pretty happily if you get something out of the deal. But in the end, they just kind of wasted the money on the Necrophos because, I mean, maybe it stops Roshan at the very least. Yeah, but, but Necro would have been back by the time that, you know, Complexity go in and, well, there's no vision around there. So sure, EG, you know, wouldn't know if they would have just, you know, jumped in there. But I still think there would have been a buyback at that time. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, the whole thing is, like, the, the, the ways that this plays out, right, where you go, okay, this makes sense, like, Universe doesn't buy back in this fight at all, and you say, cool, so they just don't think that the one lane of Rax is worthwhile for buying back at the stage, because, you know, you, you may need that for something more important, like a game-winning or game-losing moment. But the fact that he buys back and gets absolutely nothing out of the deal, that just hurts, and it just means I that mean, he's... not even a single kill, not even on a support. If it was on a support, I still would have said it's not worth it. Yeah. And Complexity is still going to get the rush. Complexity actually just outplaying EG, in my opinion, in regards with their positioning. And MVP Mu here, he's just forcing the entire side of EG to jump on him the whole time. EG can't jump onto Limp. The one fight that they jumped onto Limp and just destroyed him when he had Aegis, they actually won that fight. Even when they were behind. But currently, they're throwing everything in onto Mu. It's like fighting against a Bristleback. Don't target Mu. <laughs> The problem is, though, he does have an atrophy aura that, that, I don't know. I, I just want to say, if, if we throw in our claim as well, I also want to point out that I think Z Freak's had a really good game. He's been really invasive in the way he's played, just getting on top of a lot of the EG players. Yeah, he's farm, dude. 
Yeah, he's, he's so done cool. really well, and he's been invasive and evasive. He's had his moments where he's just been able to get out of trouble. I actually recall um, around the mid lane when there was a team fight where he managed to glimmer cape, move towards the tree line, and actually walked straight out of harm's way. Think about the TP uh, we saw early on next to the shrine. He's just had a pretty solid performance as well. Cole have played pretty well, and I think they should be credited for that. But at the same time, I think I think EG will probably have a couple of face farm moments that they'll look back and go, "This was not our finest." Well, I, I normally don't look at Twitch chat while I'm busy casting. I, I, you know, join in afterwards and have a chat with the guys. But there is one thing, though, that I have to say, which everyone is spamming in chat. Sprout TZ. That's just so Sprout good. Tea, yeah. That's just so good. I, have, I just have to say it. We might actually see an engagement coming through here. They are smoked up. And they will see that the Ancients have actually been cleared here. So, yep, there you go. Buckler's actually being popped here by the Silencer. They're trying to see if they can actually catch anyone out here. Um, specifically, anyone that wants to jump in onto Moo, which has sort of been EG's plan, I think. Is, hey, they see Moo, they try and jump him and kill him. If they can't, then they normally die. That's, I oh. think, a TLDR of this game so far. I I'm pretty sure the smoke might have been... Um I wouldn't say scouted, but, you know, this casual underlord just walking towards your base. Like, I, something doesn't seem quite right here, lads. I think we're going uh, to give this one a pass. We'll, we'll, we'll leave this one alone for now. Well, they've hardly actually been able to kill him. Sure, he's only 2, 3, and 12. So he has actually died quite a bit. Um, you know, considering Nature's Prophet is 4, 1, and 18. But it's still, he's just so damn tanky. Oh, he's Angry Sven. And yeah, there you go. Angry Sven coming in. BKB is being popped right now. Can they actually do enough damage onto the Underlord? Underlord gets blown up. This is exactly what EG needed. Now they want to go in for more. Unfortunately, Sven just gets headshotted. And the Sniper is just trying to kite out uh, Sumail here on the Sven. But there comes the stun. Oh, the Manta dodge from Limp. Just insane plays. Unfortunately, one crit needed. And that is going to be the Aegis dropping. However, crit does fall after that. Are they going to be able to turn around? Limp does use his um, Hurricane Pipe to push him out. And a good stun coming through here from the Rubik. Once again, the Ice Pots just doing everything that they need to. And is that going to be another kill? Nope, they don't manage to actually get the kill onto him. But unfortunately, Sumail, he's just caught between a rock and a hard place. And he is dead. Well, Artizi managing to just jump back in there, getting a quick kill. Once again, exactly like you said, Z Freak in the perfect position, stealing the ice path and getting a, not even a mini ravage, a big ravage. I think catching four heroes in the ice path here. Well, that was more down here. Yeah, just everyone, everyone trying to get involved. And it was a fairly nice setup as well because you had the Sven du double stun followed up with double ice path. Uh, ni nice use of the force splash there just to reduce some of the damage. But yeah, yep. fight well, on. They want to go in for more. BKB is up on RTZ. He wants to try and get a kill here onto Kyle, but unfortunately the Atrophy Aura 40% missed chance here just because the little Underlord is alive and now they want to push him for more. They they want a second lane of racks. And is there a buyback? There's no buyback up on the Sven. This is very dangerous right now. RTZ wants to go in. He's jumping here straight in onto Limp. But Limp just uses his, his Hurricane Pike and that's going to be crit dropping. And unfortunately, they can't really do much more. RTZ has to back out completely. He, he does not have the damage enough. And this is going to be a second lane of racks. Sure, Fear dropped his Macro Pie, just trying to delay it. Very odd placement there. He's just trying to split up the fights as much as possible. But the side of complexity, they want to go for Megas. Still 17 seconds left up here for the Sven to come back. And they might just be fighting against Megas right now. RTZ, he wants to jump in 5 seconds, 4 seconds here for his BKB. This might be their last timing window. It might be their last time to try and do anything. And there you go, RTZ, he jumps in. Is this going to be his BKB being used? Nope. They actually go in. There's the BKB and they're trying to get the kill onto Limp. But unfortunately, they don't have any vision. They can't do anything about that. Global Silence coming through now as well. And there is such a huge play coming in from Mu. Catching all the heroes and just taking them back to base and saying, Come with daddy. Daddy's got you. All the way back home. You're safe. <laughs> and I think uh, that's, that's probably all she wrote. I mean, you got, you got the Mega Creeps up against you now. Um, you're 14k behind on ex on net worth. Your experience is also like n not that bad, to be perfect honest. You're at about 3k, but there's just, there's just no really place for you to go if you're EG at the moment. This map is now Cold Land, and I think it's just a matter of time before this one closes out. But I mean, Sumail does enough damage. The problem is he can't get to anyone. He blinks in, and if he's not BKB'd, he just gets Hurricane piped out. He blinks in, he gets sprouted up. He blinks in, he gets lifted. He blinks in, he gets pit of malice. He blinks in, he gets headshot. 
Well, headshotted. I think that's a word. I don't know if you saw, for, uh, for example, earlier on the bottom fight, the Sven was running after the sniper. Sniper would run two steps, shoot back, get a headshot. Run two steps further, shoot back, get a headshot. Run two steps further, shoot back, get a headshot. Oh, it, it was very frustrating, actually, as well. Like, you just saw, saw the, this case where you, you're just trying to get on the front, but you're trying to just connect with something. You're just being kited very, very well. And Sniper is probably one of the best heroes to do it as well, because the headshot is very, very irritating. And often, one thing you need to bear in mind as well is that when, you, when you're following forward with a hero like Sven, you're trying to blink as well, because you, you're not just going to be able to run somebody down if you're not, uh, like, you know, ungodly far ahead. So you're generally looking to get a little bit of damage off, then blink off them and deal some more. But... In a, on the case where you're in the retreat and you have a sniper who's just quietly just pegging away at you on the sidelines, just re removing that ability to blink forward and, uh, you know, just a, a constant menace on you. It's it's very, very challenging to, to play on the front foot. And right now, I think uh, the only thing left for EG to do is, uh, well, hope for some sort of miracle. Well, and we do see another jump in once again here from Sumel doing exactly what we just said. He jumps in, but he's just getting kited. He's getting hit here like crazy from Limp. And there's the global silence coming through. Sven is down for the count. He does have buyback and he's actually going to be forced to use it right now. They want to go in for more Arteezy. He's trying to get a kill here onto Limp, but Limp is still alive. Unfortunately, Crick goes in and I'm lagging like crazy for some reason. Sumel, he's going to be the next one to drop. This might actually be GG. Well played, being called by EG. They just could not do enough. The kiting was just so much coming through from complexity and they they literally controlled every single team fight. Pretty much. It, it, I mean, th there were a couple of occasions where I think that a complexity made like a, a, quite a meal of the team fights as well, where you found like EG split up into an awkward position and complexity not really capitalizing as well as they may have liked to. But it was really a case of complexity made less mistakes and they made less glaring mistakes. And in the end, EG will probably not want much of this game on their highlight reels well guys for those of you guys joining in game uh, it's time to say bye we're of course just going to be chatting a bit more on stream but very quickly because the next game is going to be up having a quick look here at the stats though and specifically the graph i want to show how up and down it was the whole time and the whole game except for the last couple of minutes where everything just went in favor of you know complexity the last 10 minutes specifically it just started climbing and it did not look good for the side of eg Universe, in my honest opinion, felt very underwhelming here. And I'm a huge fan of a Necro. I honestly think Necro is probably one of the strongest heroes in the game. But if you don't go, you know, being 2 4 and 9 with only 358 GPM and you had a solo lane to start off with, yeah, that's a problem. It, it it's definitely not the performance they would have been looking for, and I think they know that they're better than this, and that they'll probably come back with a vengeance, so I think you'll see a very different look of EG. Like I said, I don't think this was near their finest performance or what they're actually capable of, yeah. but... Just you know, look at Limp, though. Like, they, they played really well. 12, 3, and 17 on Limp. Guys, we'll be back with game number two shortly. Of course, I'm Reddit, joining me was Halberd, and big ups to BTS and Starladder for letting us cast these games. It's been a real treat. Hopefully these games go, well, hopefully they go three games. Because I yeah, want to cast three games now and then three games later as well. Yeah, we cast a privilege. We like to hope for... Who, so now we can all base to get behind EG and say they'll give us a game three, right? So, yeah. I don't, blue, right? I don't really think people need an excuse to get behind EG. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, let's hope for EG win game two so we can go to a game three, guys. We'll be back in the next few minutes. Bye. See ya.